Uh, in this tutorial, I'll be showing you how to create a digital clock using Adobe Flash Clear Script and Action Script 2. The first thing you want to do is you want to create Action Script 2 document. So you click on there, um, you can delete the size as it is. You'll need two layers. You're going to rename the first to Clock and you're going to re rename the second layer to Actions. First layer, this is where we're going to have our clock on this page going to show and the actions layer is going to have all our code which is going to function the clock so first thing you're going to click on the clock layer and you're going to select the text tool you can click on it by there or you can press T on your keyboard um, once you've selected it you want to draw a text box make sure your <coughs> make sure your text is dynamic text you can have the size font color as ever you want. Make sure that your font is embedded. So you select your font and then you press embed and you press OK. Um, you want to give it an instant name. I'm going to call it mm, digital clock. The, the instant name is used in the code to recognize the, this text box here. So that's that for now. Um, you want to go into your actions layer um, you can press F9 on your keyboard or Windows actions and this is where our code will go so first thing you want to do is you want to create a variable my timer timer equal new timer my timer dot add event listener timer event dot timer go okay my timer dot start this will allow the timer to start and then update time my timer timer you see if I got any mistakes not much if so you want a function, so this will function the go variable that we created here. So function go event timer event bracket void. You want to create a curly bracket inside there. We want to put update time. That's what we created it here for. This on, on on go, it'll ask the timer to update time. And we're coming out of there. We're gonna create function update time void. Inside here, we're gonna create variables. Variable for date. Um, new date. Uh, variable for seconds u int equals day dot get seconds this will allow the, f the the clock to pick up whatever time it is on your machine that you're using so anytime you start the function or get the exact time that's on your machine so a variable for seconds now we need minutes u int equals date dot get minutes and we do the same for hours so variable hours u int equals date dot get hours now remember how we created the instant name we're going to use that here so we're going to put digi to clock dot text equals so now we're going to create these pads for it to recognize the hours plus that's the time separator that's going to separate our time for us um, pad minutes p 
plus we're gonna repeat the same thing as the others plus pad that's your measuring bracket pad and then seconds so you close the bracket close that this should get us the time for our timer okay we need to get out of there and create a new function for the pads that we just created so function pad number number um, need to create a new variable for number so variable new underscore number n u m for number and then we need to create string s d r i n g string equals string and then number now we need an if statement if the new number length less than two then we tell it to create a new number which is equal to zero plus quotation marks around the zero because we're telling it to start from zero so plus new underscore number we close that there and in here we're gonna tell it to return to new underscore number so uh, you can test to see if this works by pressing control enter on your keyboard so let's see if this works there you have it the time is same as your what's on your computer on your machine in the back corner working and we should change to 56 and go yep perfectly fine so that's all guys thank you for watching and good luck